uh, Adin Sebe Mayaho. Thanks for visiting us in our operations at our headquarters. Thank you for inviting me. My first question is about uh, your impression about it history. I love it. I mean, uh, I've heard a lot about you guys. Uh, I wanted to like, witness it myself. I wanted to interview the kids and see the projects. So I'm very, very, very happy. It was amazing to have you here. And my next question is about the tech ecosystem in Ethiopia. We know that this is a special time and there are some reasons. And uh, like from your perspective, why there is a great opportunity now in Ethiopian tech ecosystem? I think mainly because we have a ton of young people. We have uh, 34 public universities. We have, I think, 75% of the graduates coming out in STEM, engineering. And I think it's much easier to train engineers to become software developers. Uh, I think because the, the tal talent divide globally is also shifting from that of Eastern Europe to India, from India to places like uh, Nigeria, Kenya, eventually, obviously, Ethiopia. And then I, I also feel like there's a, a ton of young people doing that in Ethiopia on Upwork and so forth. Uh, individually we're successful, but uh, collectively we still have a sold a country uh, as a potential tech hub. That's the problem. Companies who can hire talent from Ethiopia. So you know the culture, you know technology. What is your message to those companies? What is something that they didn't discover about African talent, especially Ethiopian talent yet? No, I think I think um, it's a perception that. Uh, Talent from Africa is non-existent, or talent from Africa is not of uh, talent or capacity. Uh, I think my advice would be to try it out. Uh, don't give us 100% of your work, give us 5%, 10%, test us, uh, and then make a decision, right? And uh, I think you guys are probably the best uh, talent pool there is in the country. So this is about Ethiopian diaspora. Uh, like in our previous conversation, you mentioned that Indeed, in Africa, we can follow Indian model. So the outsourcing started not out of Purdue, but Indians who were in the developed world who started giving some work to uh, people back in the country. So what can Ethiopian diaspora in US, in Europe, can do for Ethiopia? Very simple. Outsource talent, outsource, outsource work. As you know, it could be Anything, it could be data entry all the way down to some serious software development. Whatever we're able to do, they should be able to bring us some work. They should be able, and make it, a, you know, it should be transactional. It shouldn't be, a, I'm Ethiopian, so I'm going to give you work. No, we have to be able to prove that we can do the work. But I think we have now. Uh, I think if the likes of Google and, and ChatGB can find talent in Ethiopia, there's no reason why others can't. Uh, I think, like I said, I think the really successful kids that are out there at home right now doing remote work, they're not talking because they don't want the government to know they don't want it <laughs> for obvious reasons. But I think uh, I think it's it's due time and I think for a lot of Ethiopians uh, outside, they don't really understand and know what's going on. So I think collectively, everybody in the tech world here in Ethiopia and the ecosystem needs to make some serious noise. Well, this was a great time. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.